These my type of numbers right here. That's right. DJ Caesar pulled a wrist, drop a bomb on him. It's like oh. it ain't no escaping it. They kill us and taping it. Baptisms turn to drowners. Gotta be a bathing ape in it. A cold world, so I stay close to the heater. Gotta look at how they treat us. Crooks and poses leaders. Cops lock and kill us. Doctors, they won't heal us. So I just fear law and I stick to the five pillars. I try to give them gems every time I let a verse go. Pray for the best, but be prepared for the worst, though. Dudes talk like bitches and they move like delicious. All my dogs vicious and they move like malicious. Drums in them long clips. This the shit we arm with Blade on the chopper back Sit under my armpit Real Vietnam shit And no I don't glorify Trouble come knocking door flying Shit is horrifying Feel like we drown us Getting deeper and deeper So I sleep with the sweeper in Case I meet with the reaper So trust ain't even optional Ops and cops watching you Vaccines seem like They just wanna put some shots in you But like a bartender I'ma send them shots too We can send them back and forth Till they send the we cops through up. Yeah You know what's good Yo, 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 check it out, check it out, check it out. Y'all have now tuned in to the Devin Wade show. Uh, that right there was a joint called Fuck the Rules uh, by Porter Rich. Um, and, and that's how niggas is feeling right now, man. Fuck all the rules. Fuck all the rules, man. If, if the rules is only um, for one side of the fence and not for the other side, it's only for certain people and not for other people, then like, you know, like some wise men said, uh, I'm no longer considering myself under contract with society if society ain't under contract with me. You know what I'm saying? So fuck all the rules. And uh, like I said, that was a joint by Porter Rich. One of two of the uh, riot joints that he just put out. What was the other uh, riot music record? Um, the whole project is titled Riot Joints. Oh, Riot it's, Joints. It's, riot Joints. It's, yeah, it's me, DJ Caesar, and Shane Ryan. Shout out to uh, Shane and Ryan from Philadelphia and DJ Caesar. Uh, that's family, and we just came together. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, I actually had a session with uh, Tracks. You know, shout the Tracks, and um, it just happened, bro. That wasn't even like what we scheduled to do. We just went in there, and I think it was like meant to be. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? With everything going on, you know, we just got together and collaborated, man. Me, the DJ, and Shayna, and that's what came out, man. Yeah. We got riot joints dropping next week. Yeah, I watched. <clears throat> I watched you make that. Make that shit, and that shit was completely fire. It had, we had to use that. Um. In the building today, you know, I just want to announce everybody that's in here to the left of me right now is our DJ, uh, very beloved by by our viewership. Hey. They love <laughs> some DJ Chelsea Lee. I don't blame them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, I mean, they really like they they like they want to smell your butt. That's really what's going on right now. Dirty. They is out here. Yeah. They is out here crazy. Nah, some right. of them do be savage. Nah, it's it's it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Trolls. They're funny. They not trolling. They're dead serious. They actually <laughs> they 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 love Chelsea since day one. But yeah. since uh since last week's episode did just last uh Tuesday's episode did just did just uh -huh. air yeah. oh they going crazy over yeah. Angelina though oh yeah oh, oh yeah. yeah they, they, they going would not stupid stop. yeah they they going crazy man they going crazy out there um to the left of her of course you already heard his voice Camden's own Porter Rich always in the building you and to the left of him <laughs> a bird <laughs> what's going on y'all it's Garnett Briscoe what's up with y'all man I'm vibing right now. I'm chilling. My man Els is in the building. I'm having a good time tonight. Yeah, What's I going mean, on, it's herbal essence in, in the building. I, I mean, it smells that, wonderful. I, I, I wasn't that doesn't bring smell. That, up. that doesn't smell wonderful. That smells like skunk. And that smells, it smells wonderful. wonderful in certain situations Listen, like this. Yeah. That smells wonderful. One of yeah. our new possible sponsors, <laughs> skunky guys. I need some Shout skunky like guys. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely got a sponsorship coming. Skunk Master Flex, you understand? Yeah, word up. But um. Man, 2020, weird world, what can crazy, we say about it? crazy shit going on right now in the world, man. Um, And right now, man, we are in revolutionary times. It's so much going on, especially, you know, in our area, we more the Philadelphia area is going down over the bridge. Bridges shut down, riots, looting. Um, it, is wild right now, man. And people sometimes try to uh, stand on one side like it's a black. And when I say black and white, I don't mean 
the racist. I'm talking about they don't see no gray area in what's going on, that these people is fed up. Um, some people are out there, obviously, to take advantage of situations and things like that. But a lot of people, man, is really demanding change. And that's why people are out there acting the way they're acting, especially when they're, you know, approached with so much aggression from police. You know what I mean? And the police ain't even hiding it. They right on camera saying whatever they want, um, acting however they please, putting their hands on people, um, uh, rubber bullets, tear gas. It's like this shit right here is just on a whole nother level. You got uh, the president gassed a bunch of peaceful protesters, shot them with rubber bullets so that he could take a picture in front of a motherfucking, in front of churches and shit like that with a Bible that he don't know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? So we in, we in some strange times, man. How y'all feeling right now? Mm, strange, like you said, man. Strange. <clears throat> um, I think last week, you know, uh, when we did the uh, sound only joint, you know, I think I, um, I know for me, I definitely gave them like a lot of just where I was at, you know, because I've experienced some things and been through some things, especially with police, you know, and I think I, I told them, I told them that, uh, I, you know, I was emotional. I had an emotional moment where I like some tears dropped in the shower. I was in the shower and I was just, and this was right after seeing the whole George Floyd situation, you know, so for the riots to follow it up and people really went crazy. It, it took a little minute, you know, and I think I, I believe what a lot of, you know, these people who have these different theories, a lot of people said that they felt that, you know, authorities and leaders, certain leaders wanted the world to go crazy. That's why they kind of like the delayed the arrest of the officers. Mm -hmm. They wanted the like stupid shit to happen. Um, but I, it's crazy because I was actually in Philly. And one thing I will say is I was in Philly last, I think it was Sunday. It was Sunday after the uh after the podcast dropped, the uh, Sound Only Saturday dropped. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I had just talked about me being, you know, emotional and because I've been through shit and I understand when you feel trapped, when you feel like everything is just against you. You got to worry about people in your community. Now you got to worry about the people that's supposed to actually be leading us in the right direction and actually protecting us. Right. So it was crazy. And when I went over Philly, I ain't going to hold you, man. I, um, It was like the day the riots was starting. I had not. I had, I hadn't even taken heed that people said like, "Yo, the riot started over there, Rich." And the next day, I just went over there to get a friend, pick up a friend, cause she wanted to get out of there. Not even think of it, and no bullshit. I was in some like I almost felt like I was Gary getting some bullshit, bro, because I went over the bridge, and picked her up. About 10, 15 minutes. By the time I got back to the bridge, they closed the bridge. They started closing all the bridges. Everything was closing down. And when I tell you the traffic got so congested, and the energy that was in the air mm -hmm. felt like a different world, like a world going into a, like a, just a different direction, at least for that moment. You right. know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what was happening. I was there in the beginning before it got crazy. And I really, you know, I thank Allah that he got me out of there because the bridge was closed. Like I said, it was congested. It wasn't no police around. People were starting to hop out their cars to try to direct traffic they self. If you ever seen that in like movies mm -hmm. where it's like, no, yeah, you wow. can't. Yeah. And my man, I, I remember I told my man a story and he was like, oh, nah, you would have had to start hitting people with your car, Rich, if it got crazy. Oh my no, gosh. it wasn't. I couldn't move my car. So this was going to turn into like, and then I'm, I'm watching people stick their middle finger at other people. So people still on the bullshit, mm -hmm. whether it be race, racial shit or just ignorant shit, right. negative shit. And I'm like, yo, I'm telling my peoples that I'm with like, yo, one wrong argument and one punch this whole shit going bananas. Yeah. Because nobody can move. I'm telling right. you, it's going to go fucking bananas. And I ain't going to hold you. I was nervous, bro. I was nervous because I know where that shit can go. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, I know where that shit can go in real life. So, yeah, it was crazy, man. It's crazy and it's still crazy. It was a whole historic. We living through history. I don't know, man. I think uh, I'm, I'm curious as to why a lot of people seem surprised about what's going on in a sense. I'm not saying that I fully agree with it or even if I do agree with it, um, but I can definitely understand it. It's people out here that starving, man. It's people out here that ain't got shit, and this is their only opportunity to go get it. Right. It's, it's, this is America where it's not even just black people in this instance going out there. There's white people marching, too. It's white people uh, rioting. It's Asians. It's, it's a lot of people that's been done wrong by the system, too, and they all out there giving it they all. And you never know what circumstances that that person can really be in in order for them to go out there and go and do that. And, of course, we're going to have, quote, unquote, goofy people out there doing that. But that's like a casualty at war. Like, it's that 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 comes with things. Like, you don't think Martin Luther King had goofy people walking with him? 
if they had a phone and Instagram, best believe they out there having a photo shoot. Some of them. Mm. I'm not saying all of them. And I never but, even thought about that before, but that's real as shit. No, so that's a but great point. But 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 when the story is all said and done, five years later, ten years later, when the story is told, they revolutionaries, no matter how you cut it. <laughs> you get what I'm they saying? Played, they like, played a part in what took place. Right. So what I'm saying is to all, to everybody that even got something to say about it, man, this is just frustration from years of things, man. And to see the the kids that's out there, because a lot of them are kids out there mm-hmm. doing it, man, with so much fire in their eyes. Um, it's it's I'm not gonna say it's beautiful to see, but it is refreshing seeing people willing to put their life in no, the it line. No, it is beautiful to see. Man. I'll say it's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to see. You gotta remember too. People going out there, whatever they doing, looting, doing whatever, you got to think a lot of people are in a position where they feel like, I ain't got nothing to lose. So what difference do right. it make? And that's one of the main problems people is that people no exist in a world where they don't got nothing to lose. Right. So if you if that's the uh, the template, the format, the canvas that we starting with is like, oh, I'll, it don't matter to me whether I get caught or not. I might as well score something. There was a a, a, a kid a couple of days ago that blew himself up. Trying to trying to blow open a uh, ATM because that's the wave that they doing right now and they blowing up ATMs and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So people out there desperately trying to do something or get something um in a window right now. You know what I'm saying? Where they can it's this a lot to unpack. So I feel like as we speak, everybody that's listening, some things is going to jump all over the place because um, when we talk about opportunists, I had a situation yesterday. With somebody that I consider to be a friend of mine that I no longer can uh, look at in that way. And it was a person inside of a, a group chat and that happens to be Asian. And they said something about, I'm about to make some shirts that say, my color matters too. And everybody that's in this group chat is like, what the fuck is you on, bro? Like, based, what's, the, what's the purpose of that? And he said... I mean, everybody's running around talking about black people. There's black people that black lives matter. Well, what about my people? You know what I'm saying? My people have suffered in this country for X amount of years and we've, you know, been wrong done and we we're oppressed as well. And nobody ever stands up or speaks up for us and blah, blah, blah. And it was just crazy that it was th- that was really a all lives matter type of fucking comment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, this was the exact thing where they talk about. You you know one house is on fire. Your house isn't, but you saying your house matters too. And I, I had to get right. with him and say, number one, bro, on some real shit. No disrespect, we fuck with everybody. Black people always included every fucking body. Y'all didn't build this country. Black people did. Mm-hmm. It was black people's ancestors that built this country. Y'all didn't. Two, bro, we we uh we we purchased from y'all stores. You know, oh, y'all stores is in our neighborhood. Like, dog, we eat off Asian cuisine more than yeah, fuck, listen, more than our own shit. I just had four wings, French fries, salt, listen, pepper, ketchup, hot sauce from the Chinese. Bro, store we buy hair from these stores, nail salons, all of that. So we Everything. never had no issue. So, and this ain't, and this right here ain't an issue with that. This is an issue with the comment that was made there, where it was like, bro, that's kind of wild for you to even come with that type of energy, especially <laughs> when you see that this is a serious issue where people are really getting killed because we don't know the history of Asian people being killed by police yeah, officers. Yeah, we don't see that on video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, like um, like I was saying, it's crazy that you bring that up and you bring that up as one, like something that you just went through because I just went live yesterday. I just went live and I pinned, my pin was speak on black issues because... And, and let me get to what I mean by that, because I had somebody that almost, you know, somebody almost took it the wrong way. Like, yo, it's no rich. It's not about black issues right now. You know what I'm saying? This was a black one of my homies. And I'm like, no, hold on. Let me explain what I'm saying to you. But I pin speak on black issues because they said we had a blackout. Right. I called you, Dev, about the blackout. We couldn't even really like uh, kind of like come together for 24 hours with just a picture on Instagram. Remember when I called you and was like, yo, they bashing it already. People, you know, it, it, our own people talking about it. Oh, it don't make no sense. Really has no impact, whatever. Like, and it was just a gesture, a small gesture. And I actually wanted to see how many people outside of black people posted it. Because mm-hmm. we already know black people going to post it. Like they, they, they have the issue. They're right. the ones going through the issue. That's Correct. why I said speak on black issues. Mm-hmm. Right. So I spoke about like, you know, me being Latino, right. 
And even though I came up around all blacks, a lot of my family is all black. My children, half black. You know what I'm saying? But me being Latino, I just talked about me being Latino and having a portion of black in me, so they say. You know what I mean? That we descend from. You know what I mean? We descend from Indian, uh, Spaniards, Latin, and Africans. Right. So I was just saying that even us as Latinos, you know, because you got Latinos now to say, yeah, I'm Afro-Latino. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. And it's cool. Power to the people. We with it. It's all, it's all love. But when we talk about black people being oppressed and when we talk about slavery, and when we're talking about black people right now getting gunned down by the police, we're talking about black people. We're talking about 100% black people. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, now we, we, can mention, we can also mention the Africans and slavery because that's where it began. That's where it originated from. Yes, it was other people in the mix. We could get to that later. And the reason why I'm saying we could get to the, the Asians who was abused and oppressed. We can get to the Latinos who was abused and oppressed. We can get to the Indians who was abused and oppressed. We can get to everybody eventually if the world does what it's supposed to do and come together. But the first thing we need to do and talk about and get with is the black people. The black people getting killed right now every day. And this is what I was talking about on my live. I, it, it got to the point. We're like, it's a friend of mine, shout out to uh, Keith, friend of mine, you know, uh, from, the, from the city. She, she normally jump on my live and talk trash with me. And she got two sons. She's a mother of two boys, two African-American, you know, young men. And she started crying. She broke. She broke down behind everything that's going on. And I feel her pain. This is a black issue. And everybody got to speak on it. Everybody got to say something. We'll get to, to, like, even for me, like I said, Puerto Ricans, have we dealt with shit? Absolutely. Was we probably back in the day in some, absolutely probably in some slavery shit too and all kinds of little shit. Do we deal with shit now? Do we get caught up in shit? Here and there, a Puerto Rican to be the one that got killed. But for the most part, it's black people. Right. It's all black people that's getting killed. And then you get maybe a mixed guy in the mix or a mixed person here. So that's the only reason I'm saying like, nah, that's the issue we got to speak on first. Because that's what's going on. Let's be honest about it. Like you said. Asians get opportunities. Asians Correct. open up businesses in our hood Correct. like nothing. Even Correct. Latinos. Correct. Latinos is opening up bodegas. They don't seem like they have a real issue with, right. oh, with you know, getting obstacles put You have to, you have to remember the skin color is a big deal when the police are pulling you o o over from a distance and things like that. Right. From a distance, they might see Rich and just he's just a white guy oh, driving in the car. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so a lot of that could go by. And let's, and let's, let's be clear. We from Camden, New Jersey. Camden, New Jersey is Camden, New Jersey. In the way that y'all see it, because somebody Latin was killed unjustly by the police back in like 1969, mm -hmm. you know, and there was a riot uh, for the guy uh, Rafael Rodriguez Gonzalez. What's his name? Rafael Rodriguez Gonzalez. So we do know that there's a history that has to do with uh, Hispanics being treated a certain way mm -hmm. and blacks. But like Rich said. It's almost like it's almost like one battle at a time. Sometimes, like people want to start breaking things up. Like what what happened in Dykeman was crazy. You saw that in in, in New York, where the um Dominican guys, you know, kind of took a stance against the black people when they we consider them to be black people. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of shit, man, and a lot of infighting that come from this shit that make it sad, man. It's so it's like unfortunate in the whole, but. I was in Atlanta this past week and um, I watched the videos of Atlantic City because everybody knows I, I DJ at Borgata with their clothes now, but they were bre breaking into the Nike stores. I'm sure they were doing that all, all over the place. Um, in those kind of circumstances, breaking into stores, ruining businesses that in a town where you live in that you go and buy your food, you go and buy your clothes, you go and buy your sneakers. That never, ever, ever is the answer ever to making people see, oh, I'm going to break into your store because at the end of the day, these stores, they got insurance. They're going to get their money back. They're going to be fine. That's not helping anything. And I think part of, from the coronavirus, in my opinion, people have been stuck in the house the past, what? Two months. Two months. They can't go nowhere. They can't do nothing. They can't buy nothing. Not the first sign that people's like, oh, we can go out and rage. They're not raging to stop or any type of racism they're raging just to fucking be out because finally we can be out the house finally we could go out and act a mess we can't go to the club so we're going to go break open the nike store and steal sneakers like it's so like 
And then when you see the black person go into the store and steal the sneakers, it's like, damn, that's kind of stereotypical. But then you watch in the video, a bunch of white people go in there and do it. And it's like, it's not just black people doing this stuff. It's white people doing this stuff. And I think everybody... Oh, they leading the charge, God. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has to be self-aware and know, like, if I do this, is this making it better? If I do this, am I doing anything awesome? awesome for my community am i doing anything awesome for my people at the end of the day it is about black people but racism has been racism has been around for years and it's definitely been a taught thing it's not something that oh i'm i'm born and i see black people and i don't like them right. when you're a kid you play with all the kids you're right. not like i don't want to play with that black kid i don't want to play with that asian kid i don't want to that he's dirty like he's he's chinese nobody cares about that when you're a kid then when you get older it's crazy because people were raised to look at people a certain way. There's a study, I can't think of the name of it, but there was a study from back in the 60s, I think, where a woman who was a teacher treated the kids with blue eyes different than the kids with oh, brown eyes. Oh, yeah, I watched eyes. that for sure. And that's insane because that's exactly what we're going through. There's no reason why people shouldn't look at everybody black, white, if your skin is yellow, purple, if you black as onyx. We all are one human race. It doesn't matter. People Unfortunately, need to look at it. Unfortunately, people can't see it like they that. Can't, so, so since, but we have to unlearn it. Nah, but what the problem is, once you get to a certain point to where you see, motherfuckers don't want to unlearn this shit. They don't want to. So, unlearn so, it. so what I'm saying is, once you get to a certain state, and I want to let Garnett speak. Um, you, when it comes to the writing, writing and things like that is a product of what the fuck is happening, right? So, if you look at it from the standpoint of when people took a knee, mm -hmm. right? They was unpatriotic. People lost their careers. Mm -hmm. um, people, uh, you know, dude could never play football again. There's so much shit that happens from a person taking a knee and trying to be respectful. So it seems like no matter what, what Martin Luther King marched up and down the streets, kept it peaceful, and, it's and, they, and they popped him. Yeah. So, what, so what we get to is the point of protesting is at a point where there is no right way to protest no. because the other ways that we went about protesting and doing everything the right way, the comfortable way, the nonviolent way has gotten us nothing but more bullets, disrespected more and all of that. Where now when it turns into chaos is when you start to see more people from more cultures actually stand up because mm -hmm. they don't want their mall burnt down. Mm -hmm. They don't want this. So, and at the police too, it's, it's definitely like when you go to club anywhere, you have security. I feel like the police, they have no sensitivity training. I feel like I, I think you can go to you can be a police in like a few weeks in a couple months. And there's no training as far as like de-escalating a problem and not escalating it. Because all these videos I see on Instagram, on YouTube, it's like cops are supposed to be people that we're supposed to in quotations, trust or feel like safe around. If you're black and you get pulled, my brother is dark as shit, right? And I tell him all the time, he drives a he drives a um a older Mercedes. I'm like, you gotta make sure your shit is clean. Like, don't fuck around because you don't know a cop can be racist. There's no like, how do we find out if a cop is racist or not? How do we tell these cops this is how you de-escalate a problem? You see so many videos on Instagram of black people getting pulled over and the cops just being unjust from the gate. Right. Like I don't need to see a video. I live it. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I don't need a video. And you know that. So like, it's just unjustness. And the, the cops, I feel like it definitely starts with them being more responsible for how they react to problems because there's a way of de-escalating and there's a way of making it, of making things so, worse. So just to stay on topic, because like I said, this is a deep subject. is a lot to unpack. We're going to be all over the places. There's no, uh, obviously no perfect way to speak about this. But mm -hmm. when you talk about the education part of being a police officer, if if my girl got to go to school for X amount of time mm -hmm. to fucking do hair, to do a fucking facial, how can a motherfucker go to an academy in a sh way shorter time than that and be in charge of people's life? That's like a pilot. You got 10 pilots. You know all them pilots are straight. They're mental. They're going to get people there and back. You don't have, you're not going to be like, oh, we're going to chance that one pilot might not be mentally all there and fucking crash the plane right, that's right. like police especially since you we know that this is a job that people go after that has power yeah you, you think a lot of people, people don't in. want that fucking power you can't just let people in be like oh one cop might be racist it's okay we'll chance it you don't they don't do that with airplanes they don't do that when they send people to the moon they don't do that with like i don't want to say teachers but i mean you got to have background checks there's i don't i don't have the answer to figuring out 
how the police can be educated better, but there definitely has to be a way, some sort of something that people can justify this or, or fix it or try to fix it because cops should be ashamed of themselves, especially the ones that we've seen the past couple of weeks. No, I just wanted to uh, speak on uh, some of the things that you said earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of other people that, um, as far as like why some of the people are rioting and stuff, and stuff like that, um, everybody out there, I guess, that has something to say about it and don't understand it or get it. I mean, that's you looking from that standpoint. But it's like we had mad traumatic nights, man, as, as like people. Mm -hmm. So it was like. Two days is just a glimpse of what we always been going through. Right. Yeah, you mean so, writing. That's it's, no, it's yeah. crazy. So, no, no so, but that's what he's saying. But, but so so it's like to w w when the table is flipped, it's like, oh, these people are going crazy. These people are going insane. Yeah. Like what do you what do you think? Like Oh for, yeah, it's a product to, of to what's people, happening. It's a product yeah. of people black people being oppressed and being disrespected and it's out in the open. And finally, like I said, we're being we've been locked up in the house. Finally we can come out and we see this openly and we're not supposed to react. Right. So but I'm that's why he's saying, saying that's so. why he's saying that you can't feel like, you know, this ain't the right way because the answer is we got we got well, you can of feel years. like it's not I mean, the yeah, right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, I know it. Yeah. I, I know it's not going to be no answer to, oh, you can't do this, you can't break into stores. No, it's not the right way at all. But I can also have an opinion yeah, and say, yeah. I think it's wrong. People shouldn't do that. Everybody should think it's wrong. No. We shouldn't do that. There's a way to do it. Robbing stores is not the way to do it. Especially fighting people in yeah, the street, but, being on a bridge. Yeah, but <laughs> some people also argue robbing that man's life. Like, because because if, it was, if, we was, if we was doing equal... Mm -hmm. Let's say we said, okay, robbing stores ain't equal. Okay, life for a life then. Which one would you choose? Take the uh, stores. Oh, robbing no, no. the stores. So what, so what I'm saying is we already, we know which one is actually equal and fair. Yeah. It's life for a life, right? Mm -hmm. So we going with the latter. We're going with the lower one. Well, if they take the cops that have been But they're not going to. We doing can't, that. But we can't. We, the problem we've is. We've been depending on that for so long. We, now we're talking about what we can do because we can't control what they do. They already said mm -hmm. this is gang gang. We fucking with this side. That's what we fucking with. So now on our side, we like, what we going to do? So instead of saying we're going to kill cops, people are like, oh, we're we going to break the, the rules. We're going we gonna to disrupt in every fashion whatsoever. We disrupting because it's the only thing that makes people, once they're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. people don't give a fuck about shit until they're uncomfortable. It yep. makes sense that people do that. But if we just like keep doing that, what is the response to that? We finding out the response. And right, right now the response is better than we ever got. Let me, yeah. let me, let me chim in. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I think, let me give some information. This may help because I, I, I know, you know, Chelsea's just a good person. She, you know, you get feelings like that. From, I see from, both sides from for good sure. people. No, but this is something new that just came out. This some information came out, and this is why people are really like hitting these businesses and hitting these corporations. And yes, you have a few that may be good businesses that may have took care of their community. That but got these businesses, that, no, they don't need the here, money. Listen, but you listen, got, you got some of them, some of them, some of them might got caught in the mix that mm -hmm. were actually good businesses. But a lot of these businesses on the low that we Ra don't know, they have racist people. Yeah, fuck we'll racism. Yeah. It, the whole business is racist. Mm -hmm. The whole company racist. They support Donald Trump. So right now, listen, I just got a list of businesses, right? And I don't know if this is true, but we need everybody, all of our listeners, to go research these companies. Research if this is true, that they just gave a percentage of donations to the Republicans and to Donald Trump's re-election. But they say Wendy's donated 89% to Donald Trump's new re-election coming up in November. Taco Bell, Carl's Jr., White Castle, Chick-fil-A, Papa John's, Little Caesars, Pizza Hut, Domino's Pizza, Waffle House, Buffalo Wild Wings, 80, uh, KFC, Krispy Kreme, Chili's, Jimmy John's. Everybody go research those businesses and find out if it's true if they supporting Donald Trump. Because what the problem is, Chelsea, and why people out there fucking these businesses up and fucking these stores up is because of shit like this. But do and, a lot of the people that that are fucking that shit up, do they really do their research? Do they really no, know but, but people that know, X, but Y, and Z is... Some people yeah, do. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Some, some people do. Hold on, hold on. Some and, and, and let me do. tell you something. Some of the me, protesters that's out there, they out I, there for a reason. No, and, I and, believe they, that. And they, white people are more privy to certain information. 
And the white people that's out there bashing and doing shit, of course you got people that's coming in from out of town just trying to have fucking fun mm -hmm. looting. But people do are aware that these are the same companies that when coronavirus happened and everything like that and everybody else ended up on unemployment, got a fucking uh, oh, $1,200 yeah. stimulus check, these people end up getting millions or billions of dollars. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So... So we do understand that they this subject, like I said, is so, so sensitive deep. and so deep because the same way Chell said, you know, you know, some of these people people got insurance. I, I want to talk about that because this is where I flip on the other side, right? I'm a I'm a business owner, right? I own a business. I know what it's like to build something from the ground up, put my heart and soul into it, and create something. Now, when people talk about burning businesses and they say. Well, they got insurance because that's what a lot of people that do it say. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got insurance. That ain't everything for the smaller businesses, yeah. the mom and pop businesses, because this is the part that, you know, it don't make sense. But at the same time, when it's anarchy and lawlessness, lawlessness, it comes with it. Mm -hmm. And there's other things that's going to come with it. Like if people showed up to my business to come burn it, you already know I'm getting busy. You already know how that's going to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, like, 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 you already say, know what it's going to be, right? Yo, I, I also want to tell the people because people always, you know, we are burning down some of our own businesses and stuff like that. Be mindful of what you're doing. That's what but, I'm saying. But, but also for the people that do have businesses, please. If you do have a business, try to set up some kind of buddy system or something like that to go out there and protect that business if you still want it. I'm not saying, you know, be out there shooting people, but if you got to be out there with your guns, just letting people know, like, hey, let, have a conversation with them because they're not animals. People think that they're animals. It's the same people that we work with every day. Mm -hmm. We see these people. We get on the train. These are the exact same people. They're not animals. So if you see these people, the people that you're working with going, quote, unquote, insane, then something is wrong. Right. Something is this wrong. This doesn't just come out of nowhere. And that's yeah. the main thing that people got to remember is like, it's almost like this. R.I.P. to George Floyd. If you fucking punch me out of nowhere, you can't tell me how I was supposed to react when I fight back. Yo. Yeah. You can't say, yo, he kicked me. So what? You you initiated that situation. And now you're going to react. Right. So now what happened is the people, and this is the thing, this ain't one fucking punch. You punch me in the face every day for how many years? And then finally people like, you know what, man, I, I come on. Yeah, racism racism has been around for, I've experienced racism in Cinnamonson. I parked in a lot, in a spot, and I was with my ex at the time. He was dark skin. This is a couple years ago. I took the spot, didn't even see the lady. I get out, I walk, she pulls up behind my car and says, you niggers, I'm going to wait for you when you get out and I'm going to scratch your car. I said, wait a second. She had a little son in the back seat, and she had a daughter. The daughter was like 12 and the son was like maybe eight or nine years old. I said, I'm going to walk in the store. I went into BJ's. Walking across the street, she pulls up next to me and the little boy calls me a nigger in front of the yeah, mom. It's wild shit. And I said... If I was a little boy, I would punch the shit out of him. But I'm a freaking 27, 28 year old woman. I'm not mm -hmm. going to do that. But the fact that she allowed him to do that, I'm like, these are the type of people that are raising kids. Right. And this boy is probably 12 years old now. I'm thinking, why the black fuck you think niggers. there's That's a fucking, okay. why you think is a fucking George Floyd fucking challenge with white people taking pictures posed on that a person's was disgusting. neck? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like when people, when, when, when other people of other races see things like that and try to ignore um, or downplay what it is, we up against true evil. Yeah, absolutely. True evil. When a person dies from something and you think it's funny to put your knee on somebody's neck and hold a beer and smile and make a challenge out of that. That wouldn't be cool if a person killed the animal. No. You feel what I'm saying? And it wouldn't be accepted if it was a dog or, or a cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why, listen, going listen, crazy. And that's why, and that's Excuse why I go back to my point. You know, um, like Chelsea, I agree with Chelsea. We've all might have experienced some racism in our in our in our life here too, because racism is a disease that has spread it into all of our communities. It has spread it into it's all a, a into parasite. all clubs and all groups and all nationalities, right? So everybody might have experienced some racism. But again, going back to my original, uh, what how I started this, we talking about right now the main issue that we got to deal with is the racism and the magnitude of racism and the oppression that black people are dealing with. Right. And the reason why I say that, again, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 break it down some more. I'm Latino. 
I'm 100% Puerto Rican. Now, my children, they have Puerto Rican, half black. So their life and whatever be different for them. But for me, I'm Puerto Rican. And I just feel like, and I, I, listen, I rep this 150%. Everybody know it. You know, I love my people. I love my kind. I love the culture. I love it all. But at the end of the day, I understand I'm human and I love everybody equally. Because that's how I was raised and that's what it is. That's how we should all be. But if the shoe was on the other foot where Puerto Ricans was the one who mainly did slavery like that, the way they did these people. And now, hundreds of years later, you fast forward and they still gunning Puerto Ricans down. Heavy every day. It might be a black one in every 15. You got one black. But 14 is Puerto Rican mm. every day. Mm -hmm. And the Puerto Ricans all start saying, yo, come on, man. Let's speak on this, man. Come on. You know, and then you got some black people that might say, oh, but they're killing us too, Jose. <laughs> and you know they only killed one of them yeah. versus every 15 of yours that they killing. You're going to say, come on, man, Jamal. You know they only killed one. Right. Like they killed Jose, Juan, Pedro. It'll be the same shit. And you got to remember this, we people. Would wanna fry, Listen. We would want to fry the fish that we need to fry first. The big fish that we need to fry first. And that's why I'm saying that. After, Listen, it's no secret. Not to cut you off there, but it's no secret that it's an evil thing. And it just happens to be that the, that the Europeans was the evil people back in the day. And they, and, they, and they have taught it. They have taught it. And not all white people are, you know, are evil. They trying to do it different. Some trying to break out of that shit. And we need you. We appreciate you. We salute you. For Absolutely. not for not for being fearless mm -hmm. and for wanting to really like like set the fucking example. And stand up for something. Yeah, and for the world we need for tomorrow. But we can't sit here and act like we don't know that white people, the evil white people, from back in the day that started all this shit and 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 and, and initiated all this shit and taught all this shit. Listen, man, they hate black people. Listen, they hold on. Fear I'm gonna tell, black, you, I'm gonna tell you something that's real, people, yo. Man. I'm gonna tell you something that's real. In, in 1999, I moved to South Carolina. I was down there for two years. My first couple days there, this, you know what I'm saying? I start, you know, building a relationship with my pop that moved down there from Camden. And um, we went to a grocery store. I think the joint was called Bilo or something like that. We get to the store. There's a car, that a truck that parks in front of us. This is no bullshit. I looked at the back of the car. They had a... Uh, uh, what do you call that? A uh, bumper sticker on there. The bumper sticker was a cartoon with an afro getting shot by a, by, a, by a white dude and it said coon hunting season on the back of it. When I saw that shit, I went crazy. I'm telling my dad, yo, look, look, look. And my dad is so calm and being like, boy, man, you in the South, man, don't worry about that shit. Don't pay them people no attention. Like, he he like, man, that's the type of shit they on, man. So what? Uh, he ain't going to bother you when you go in there. That's they. That's what they That's what they think. That's what they think. You got to get used to that shit down here. And I saw how wild it was because there's parts of the country that's way worse than what we even, even what we deal with up here. I'm in South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, Spartanburg. And out there, it was on some other shit. You know what I mean? Just if you was... Uh, a, a interracial couple walking in a store like it was like everybody looking you feel what i'm saying and shit like that but when you see something where it's so blatant it shouldn't even be legal to ride around with something on your car that say some shit like that and back then that was the fights that they was having over the uh over the confederate flag and and um you know they had a fucking you know a private college down there i think is it called bob jones university or something like that but in that school it was illegal to date interracially in the school, but we talking about 2000, early 2000s type shit. Back but in it, the day in Canton, Gloucester had was full of Confederate flags. It was areas out here in Jersey that was like those areas that you knew not to go in. We used to walk home from Ashland Skating Ring. We used to go skating at the Ashland Skating Ring. We used to catch the train to the Ashland Station and go skating ring out there right near the Echelon Mall. And I remember... 12 of us coming home, like 11 at night when skating let out. We used to walk to the rink from the skate from, from, from the speed line. We just wanted to skate. We wanted to go to a skating rink. Skate land was closed. Millennium wasn't here. We had to find a skating rink. We was going out of town to skate. And I remember getting chased by the skinheads, man. One of the scariest things in my life, man. Yeah, people, that was, my, that was one of my first times experiencing it, bro.
Nah, people Sticks, live through that chains, shit. chains, everything. Ball heads coming out the bushes at night, man. We got out of there, man. Yeah, so when people try to act like this shit don't exist, man, they got fucking pictures back in the day of whole towns posed up together with a black person hanging. You, yeah, these I pictures ain't that. even that fucking old. These people, grand, grandmoms and shit. They still that's alive. That's right now. They're still alive. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm still saying. Alive. People that's taught a, racism to their kids and they're still alive. It's like, do you think it could die out because people will eventually stop teaching it? No. Like, so, so if your what, mom taught you that, you're going to teach so, your child so this that. Is, so this is the problem that we start getting to. We start getting back to what Rich talked about when they talk about universal law. When they start talking about... um. Um, the the one thing people know is when you touch a fucking stove and it burn you, you like, oh, I don't want to touch that no more, right? That's the basic way that people learn. When people bully a motherfucker, right? You go there, you bully somebody until he punch you in your shit. Now you know, damn, every time I go to reach in this nigga pocket, he punch me in my shit. It gets to the point where that becomes the reality of what we in right now. People got to feel like I'm going to feel something because it's all people really respect is violence. It seems like violent people only respect violence. I'm watching a kid on his knees, right? Begging cops saying, I just want to understand you. I don't want to judge you off of a bad day. I want to see you from a different angle. I would love to eat dinner with y'all. I would love to sit down with y'all and just understand. I know that everybody that has a bad day don't make them a bad person. I just want to learn and understand y'all. And he came at the humblest way he could, the most non-threatening way he could, on his knees. They supposed to be taking a knee on his knees. And what the what happened? Officer come pushing other officers out, out the way, walk over and grab Bull up gri and gripped him up and took him away. While people sit there like, oh, my God, get off of him. It's like when you show a meekness or um, what they perceive as weakness when you're trying to come to them and say, listen, I'm gently coming to you. Hands up. Don't shoot. I just want to relate to you. And now you just want soldier time. You ain't in another country occupying people on wartime. These your own people. This shit is like they it, definitely got to pick a vibe, man. Because I mean, they do that. The they do all that militant shit, all that crazy militant shit, all this like cold shit. It don't be really like no love, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's like the next day, y'all trying to front for the community. Mm -hmm. You know, we trying to put on the front for the community. We come out, we do some shit, you know, in certain communities. Because I've seen it where the mm -hmm. police do cool shit and cool. And I'm talking about communities all over. I ain't talking about nothing specific. Mm -hmm. Communities all over where the police would come out and do shit with the kids. They'll bring out some shit, some food and games and shit. Like, y'all can't do shit like that and then turn around and kill these kids' parents. Y'all can't do I that saw and then turn around and kill their footage uncles. of people taking a knee, having the, the people come closer and then gassing them. So it's like some of this shit is is more wicked than that. You know what I'm saying? I seen a dance. Did y'all see the dance off? Um, they had it was like cops and they put music, they set up this whole thing and they wasn't talking to the cops. The cops were just lined I up that. That and was, they they was crumping. Yeah, I was, was like People was they was mad about that. I that was, was kind of confused. It was no, it, it was, was hilarious. To me it was hilarious, mm -hmm. but they was it's, like what the it's fuck is peaceful? Are you doing? Yeah, the police but, was looking at him like, yeah, we like about confused. to like hit him with like some rubber bullets. Yeah, like, yeah, keep yeah. Dancing. Yeah, yeah. And I you mean, for me, for bullets. me, for me, certain shit. <laughs> That's for, crazy. For me, certain shit is just like. <laughs> I was like, do I laugh? Or I is can't. This like... I can't tell people what to do with the way that they do shit. But for me, I, this, for me, from my information that I have of that, that's just goofy. Yeah, that's just that's goofy. Like you, you performing. I, I don't. Certain shit I don't even get. Like it's you might as well. Times, that's how bro. people. That's it's how people times. felt. Like they was more like. I guess they called it more like. I, I don't know because you got know. you got you got people like back in the day. Don't get it twisted because I know about a lot of stuff. And you got back in the day like African tribes and different tribes that did like war dances and and mm -hmm. things when times was crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's how I looked at it. Yeah, so me too. I didn't really like feel no type of way about it. I thought it was cool because I looked at it like that. Like back in the day, tribes and stuff like mm -hmm. that, when wars and everything came, it's like a silent they had protest. like traditions <laughs> that they would do, dances and stuff mm -hmm. like that to let you know the revolution was starting. And that's how I kind of like looked at it. But you know, it's just us. Yeah. We so hood, we so ghetto, we so ratchet, and we so <laughs> just shit talking because that's who we is. Mm -hmm. That 
People couldn't help but laugh Yo, and listen. say, this ain't the fucking time to be dead. Shout this. out to the <laughs> But they were serious. They was not joking. Hold on. Shout out because on some silly shit, you I definitely it? know. I condone oh. this. The boy that made the fucking song, I'm going to get his name so y'all know. The making my way downtown. <laughs> that joint. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, and he was that. like, do, 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 do. They go to dick suckers. Yeah, do, yeah, do, do, do. Put it up. Yo, put it up. listen, you listen. They was mad as shit. Yo, these cops was mad. One of the cops knew how funny it was. He just stood back like, because like, it was nothing he could do. But the way that he was coming at them, you know, it's like disrespect met with disrespect right. mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying at a certain point you got to start looking at these niggas like you a fucking clown especially like a lot I- i'm gonna keep it real these black cops i'm really starting to feel like yo, what goes on in your mind are you sitting like literally i wish i could understand the mind of why they're in that position is it literally them sitting there like yo i need this check because when you think about how much a cop is paid i wouldn't care if it was a hundred grand are you telling me that you would basically try to enslave your own people for a hundred stacks a year. Yeah. My grandfather like, was yeah, a yeah, lieutenant yeah, in Camden. My grandfather was a lieutenant in Camden. Now my little my little little cousin's a, a a cop in Camden. And my grandfather was amazing. You you say anybody, um I they call him bubbles, but Lieutenant Grimes. You ask about Lieutenant Grimes in Camden, everybody knows he's amazing. Like, and I always thought, you know, he's lieutenant, he's black. I'm pretty sure people respected him and I'm pretty sure people like feared him. He's a scary guy. I'm pretty sure around him, you know, there wasn't no racism or nothing because he would have shut that shit down. But if you're in a, uh, what do you call it? In a precinct or whatever, where it's like all white cops and there's, not a lot of black cops. I'm pretty sure people are just doing what the fuck they want to do. Man, in front of black shit. cops, people say wild shit. Bro. You know how many the, black some, cops? Some of the black cops are saying well, the right, wildest right. shit. Right. Yeah, they do. It's definitely, they do. Listen, it's definitely about money, man. It's definitely about me. Shout, you know, shout to and any. And power. People and, want like, well, power. I can't even shout y'all out right now because it's so cold. People be mad at me for shouting y'all out. But good officers, we need y'all to speak up. We need you to play your part. We need you to really like do something so we can fix this man, world. Step man, step out of formation and let niggas know I'm not with this goofy shit yeah, like, we like yeah I'm here I'm here this is my job to be here to occupy this shit to make sure this shit goes smooth but it's nothing wrong with me saying and I fuck with the fact that y'all people are standing up for yourself but I'm but I'm here to, to protect everybody mm-hmm. a lot of this shit is about money bro to the all the way down from the small scale to the individuals like you mentioned the officer who might just be concerned about himself and what they offering him to do all this bullshit or to be okay with the bullshit or to turn his cheek on the bullshit it's about money. Same thing with these corporations. These corporations that just gave all this man all this all this money for donations. It's support. They in favor with the fuck shit that he doing for the rich people. You know, and they willing to turn their cheek on all the fucking cold shit he doing to all the other people. But one thing I will say about that, right, is that a lot of people, a lot of people, even some of the people who had like a lot to say about the business is getting destroyed and businesses shouldn't be. A lot of these people were business owners. Mm-hmm. So and, and then you had business owners who understood it. Like, nah, fuck it. Tear minds up too. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever. You mm-hmm. had you saw it was mixed views out there on all of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's keep it a hundred. A lot of the people, even people who like colored people, people of color, whether they Latino or whatever, a lot of people supported Trump on some money shit. On some money shit, thinking that Trump was going to be this great businessman. He knew how to do economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he a little racist. Yeah, he a little on the ugly side. But (laughs) since we so bought this money, we going to ride with him anyway and see what he doing. Now they really getting to see what the fuck they supported, right? Mm -hmm. So now we need to decide for this next election, right? Because everybody keep worrying about, listen, I like money too, right? I like money too. But if I'm only concerned about myself, right, and my money... To an extent where I don't give a fuck about nothing else in the world, nothing that goes on in the world, then guess what? When the world's, when we going through some shit like what we're going through right now, where the world is feeling the pain over what leaders of the world are allowing and doing, and they fucking go crazy, the people who felt like I'm not concerned about the world, I'm just concerned about my business and my money Mm -hmm. and my wealth, you can't really say too much. Because you don't give a fuck about the world. You just give a fuck about yourself. Right. So you really like your opinion and your feedback doesn't really matter to these millions of fucking people and all the people that's going through shit because you obviously don't give a fuck. And that's a lot of people. A lot of people want to just get their money, stay out the way, 
stay, and it ain't only white people that want to stay right. quiet. It ain't only white people that want to stay quiet. You know, it's people of color mm-hmm. and our own people that's just focused on the business end of this shit. Right. They probably even supported Trump the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah, and when God it, listen, forbid that they would support him a fucking again. Especially when it comes to shit with taxes or tax breaks for people that got um more money. you know that got more money. Cause this is something else I wanted to get into. Like, and this is super important to me, this portion. Because the one thing I could say is people, you know, it's complex. You hear we all got different opinions here, but the one thing that we do agree upon is that black people is being oppressed. Black people is getting murdered and we need this shit to stop, right? Absolutely. And we need to right. speak up. And we so need to speak up. That. So what happens is, so what happens is we can't get caught up in the small differences of whether or not, I, and I'm not saying this is what I think, but I'm saying if Deb said burn a store and Chelsea said, don't burn a store, do this. And Rich said, don't do this, smack a cop. And he said, don't, whatever it w- would be, the people can't start infighting with each other mm-hmm. because right. it's still, um, you know, it's still one uh, thing that we're up against. And if we was going to go fight a group of people and I said, I'm throwing all, all, all punches and kicks. And you said, no, I'm leading with the jab and throwing uppercuts. I'm not throwing no kick. Right. I don't give a fuck. At a certain point, it gets to the point where I'm just like, are you doing something? Yeah. Like, are we're you, fighting are, together. Yeah. Are, are, are we doing something? Right. So this is what I wanted to get into. Right now, there's been a call in, like a call out of celebrity figures. People are demanding that celebrities, rappers, actors, influencers, sports uh, people, athletes, whoever, commentators, people are upset with people for not speaking up or not, um, you know, we ain't hear from you, Will Smith, or we didn't hear from you, Meek Mill, or we didn't hear from you, whoever. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm watching people say this shit, right? But this is what I want to say to people, because somebody said something to me uh, without even... It was almost like he didn't even check and Me see and, and check and see what my uh, last what my episode that's currently out is about. Mm-hmm. Like so a person like, yo, you should be using your platform to do this and do that. And I said, did you listen to the episode? He said, I actually haven't listened to one of your episodes yet. The fuck? In the discussion. It's like, mm-hmm. so so you don't even so you talking without even understand it did you even scroll down my page to see because it's, it's here it's there what the fuck is wrong with you but for people to be in a position where they i talked about worshiping celebrities to the point where they think their favorite comedian or their favorite fucking saxophone player or whatever the fuck they do got the answers to to this problem you're fucking wrong and what you're actually doing is you got so much uh Faith and hope and, and things wrap into this person that doesn't even do that. That's not even a lane, right? That you saying, I need to hear from you about this issue. But what you're really saying is, I need you to say the exact thing that I want you to say mm-hmm. about this issue. Or I'm going to cancel you and hate you forever. Because that's what's mm-hmm. happening. That's what's happening is you got, you know, MC drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? And you like, you need to speak up about this. But that ain't his lane. Now, when he speak up and say what he say, and he say, I don't think we should be looting stores, and you think we should be looting stores, now you don't fuck with him. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's another reason why some people are sitting back quiet, because they do feel, they do feel something. Pressure, yeah. They feel something. But what they're saying is, I feel passionate about this, 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 and this, but I don't agree with this. And if they say that, it's always going to be a part of the crowd that's going to cook you. So... Y'all got to realize to stop putting, um, I see somebody, influencers, speak up. Them influencers is influencing you on what sneakers to wear, what mm-hmm. fucking scarf to wear. I know. I don't need them to influence me on, the, on a political issue or on an issue with my people because that's not what the fuck they do. False idols. I had somebody that I've known for years DM me like yesterday, the day after I talked to you and said, you got 50,000 plus followers, use your platform and speak on it and this and that. And this is coming from a good place, but came out of nowhere. And a part of me was a little offended because you don't know what I'm going on in my life. Right. Like regardless of all this other stuff. Right. That's going on in the world. That's terrible. That's sad. That hurts my fucking heart. I still could be, somebody could have died in my yeah, family exactly. last night. Exactly. My house could have burnt down. You don't know what happens. So to DM somebody or to think because you have all these fo- people, let's be real. People don't follow me because they care about my political opinions. 
They look at my just, Instagram. They see DJing. They see music. They see bikinis. That they don't is follow me. That's not the me. reason why I followed you. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I have an opinion, and I will speak sure. on it. Oh no, no, no! I, I was talking about bikinis. the no. I was bikinis, talking about the booty, I was talking about the first. Girl. You know what I meant? Yeah, I know. People that. do not like. I'm not on a platform to tell people how they should feel about anything. I have my opinion, but also, like Dev said, it is a little bit scary for me to say, "Okay, well, Black Life Matters" or "All Life Matters" or this and that, and just put it out there because then once you put that out there, people are going to judge you and mm -hmm. say, "Well, Chelsea said Black mm -hmm. Life Matters," and then I have all. Well, what about all life? And what if I say all life matters? What about Black Life? Somebody's always going to have a problem with what you mm -hmm. say. And my platform is positivity. My platform is being who you are. I post shit all the time about getting to know yourself, loving yourself better. And if we all took a little bit of time to look at ourselves before we look at other people, correct? Then it could be a little bit better. We, right? We'll, we'll be farther along. Right. Worry about they just now, judge other people in thing, their opinion. Another thing, when she when she spoke on, she said she don't know. Uh, people don't know what the fuck is going on in 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 her life, right? Yes. Bills don't stop. Everything is still going on. There's still some people dealing with sickness. There's people dealing with um. Um, struggling, working, trying to pay their bills. Like, they got wild shit going on in their own houses, beefs, uh, whatever, right? And you got people that's already dedicated to causes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I might look at my schedule and say, okay, mm -hmm. I work I work on Tuesday. I record on Friday. I, I mean, I mean, uh, I record on Wednesday. On this day, I got to design something for somebody. On this day, I'm out feeding the homeless. Like, I already got a schedule. On this day, I'm out setting up, uh, you know, something for new souls because mm -hmm. this is the community you donate outreach. Your time yeah, all the time, right, right. Before this happened, so, for years, for years, I right. Know, I know, but then I see a, it. But a, but I could be out doing something for my community, right? As we will be this weekend and had last weekend, the weekend before that one, and the weekend before that one, right? And uh, so forth for years. And a person could go in my DM and be like. Where are you at during it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. While somebody was protesting and doing that, I was feeding the homeless over here because mm -hmm. I'm still doing work in my community, making sure mm -hmm. that certain people have. We tr we we still on the on the on the boots on the ground, ground floor, trying to make sure that our kids got shoes on their feet, mm -hmm. got food in their belly, get to experience something, learn something. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like certain shit, dog. It's like. People yeah, got to really yourself. look at what the fuck they doing, man. They not putting no time in enough. I know he was coming from a good place, but I just feel like. I, and, and I told him, I was like, you don't know what I got going on in my life. He said, you don't know what I got going on in my life. I said, exactly. That's why even if you had 200,000 followers, I'm not going to DM you and say, you better put your opinion up. You better speak up. I'll speak up when I feel that I'm going to have a quote to say that won't and be taken the wrong you, way. You, you might have already spoken up from your actions. Yeah, exactly. Right. What was the rant on Tuesday's episode? It respecting? Was on, no, no. Respect, yeah, yeah. Respecting time. Judging. No, oh, judging. Oh, last, oh, yeah, okay. That was last week. Mm -hmm. This week. Mm -hmm. It was judging oh, yep. and division. Mm -hmm. Because judging leads to division. Mm -hmm. It's back what, we, what you just spoke about. Mm -hmm. Where we can't even work together. And guess what? We don't even have to work together to be working together. Because it's like you said. If we got a common goal and you doing it your way, I'm doing it my way, but we both aiming for the common goal, right? Mm -hmm. We should be able to respect each other's differences. Mm -hmm. right. That way, the division doesn't come in. Right. because But we suffer from that, bro. We suffer from hating each other, self-hate. Judging people. Uh, it, it, well, that, that all falls under the self-hate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way we do it. We judge each other. We talk about each other. We compete with each other in everything down to religion. The things that we're not even supposed to be competing in. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So we got to start deprogramming all this shit, even right. within ourselves. Division, look, look at us. And this is hilarious. But look at us. Already on the podcast. Look at the comments we had last week. They was like, yo, uh, Dev, get the mic from Porter. We got to like, you know, there was just shit talking. Mm -hmm. We laughing right. about it. But it's really like how we do sometimes. You know what I mean? When they, like, we try to like make shit and we we look for conflict. We love conflict. Right. We love a little issue. You know what I mean? Like, oh, and, and, try and, to make and, one. And we're going to have a whole discussion one day. And we, I think I want it to be a visual where we talk about, uh, 
you know, religion and things like that. But people do it in that very heavy the most. And that's that people try to um, one up each other in intellect. This shit that's going on right now isn't about how smart you are compared to the how smart the next person is. Everybody want to get into a debate to talk about how smart they, they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what's important right now. And if you see somebody putting an effort in to do something, let them do that. Right. Don't force people to speak on something so they can speak on it, say something you don't like, and then you can fucking cancel them. That's not their expertise. That person has no history in that. They don't fucking, uh, they're not educated in that. And just tell somebody, I need you to speak on something that you're not educated on, that you're not going to be, um, you got you're not ready to speak yeah you on got it. people now jumping out well that's just the racism shit like the fucking drew Brees and his fucking comments and shit like that people will think they want to hear from a motherfucker until they hear from them and then right. boom. then when they hear from them then be, you know when they hear what, disappointed then you now you fucking hard now broke. you're wasting your energy and on something that's not towards anything positive it's not helping nothing and now we all just gotta look at the situation too for it is People can lie on Instagram. Like, that's a thing. A oh, lot yeah. of people don't have to say the truth. So the way I view it is, it may be a nice gesture for the people that may have put that out there and agreed. The way I look at it is, is the action, man. Like, what's mm -hmm. what's going on? Because in a war, if you got military, everybody do with, like, everybody has different jobs. Right. So everybody isn't going to be frontline. I don't expect them to be. But do you have a, a, a facility where maybe you could give people jobs in a community that's hurting? You can do that route. Right. You know, it's, it, it's like can you build a factory in right. a community that needs work? Because we all know that there's a lot of just like when when I said when I moved to South Carolina, it was a couple companies there that everybody worked at. It was weird as hell. It was 3M. You know what I mean? Like that make tape and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy because almost everybody that lived in this area. All worked at either 3M and the other company might have been BMW. So you used to see everybody riding around back then in these little Jones called Z3 cars. Mm -hmm. You was like, it was like everybody had them. But it was because, it was because that was the foundation of that town. If that, if you erase that, you know, from that town, mm -hmm. it would, it would collapse almost back then. I don't know what it is now, but Something like that, what you're saying, hey, we're going to build something in this town and mm -hmm. we want people from this town to work in this factory. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. That's the things that change is um, kind of like Cooper Hospital and things like that being there. Hey, come we, on, man. We, we, we all have to know our roles and play our part. And we have to respect other people's parts. And, and don't get me wrong. Like in this world, when we talking about equal opportunity and fairness and equal laws and equal stuff like that, especially as far as opportunities go. Like, we already know that, like, a lot of people might not want shit. We already know that a lot of people might decide to, like, fuck their life up. And these are people from all walks of life, from all nationalities, all color. They might want to just get high all their life and whatever, be homeless all their life. They might not want to change. That's on them, and that's kind of like to that if they're offered help and if they're whatever and don't want it. But it's people out here who actually want opportunity and can't get it. It's people who actually want opportunity and there's obstacles in front of them because of their color of their skin or because of where they come from or because of their last name. Right. You know, Systematic that racism is yeah. deeper than that. People are it's real. People are climbing out of a hole to get on even playing field with you. When people say shit like like if you white and you listen to this, turn off the resistance in your mind. That thing that makes you say, no, 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 I don't want to hear that. Turn it off and hear it for what it is. When they say that a black person has to do something spectacular in order to be considered equal with white people, you got to really be so above and beyond in skill set in order to do that shit, man. Chris, it's real. Chris Rock got a joke about that, how he lives um, in like the same neighborhood as Beyonce and their neighbor is a doctor. It's like, hold on, what the fuck? Like, we had to, like, I had to become this, I, one of the greatest comedians of all time, Jay-Z the greatest, Beyonce the greatest, and yeah, doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a joke that encompasses what this is all about. Like, people really got to be, like people would say, you have to be freakishly talented in order to make it out. And I tell people all the time that with my circumstances, everything that surrounds my life story, I happen to be freakishly talented. This is the beyond, This is the honest to God truth. The thing that separated me from all my friends and everybody that grew up in my neighborhood, in Stockton Station, all of that was that 
yo, this dude could create anything out of his hands that he want. And anybody, everybody needs that because everything that you look at in life is designed first. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And being able to have that skill set without no schooling, because I didn't get it from school. I got it from God. You feel what I'm saying? Freakishly talented. Right. So I'm lucky in that regard to be able to climb, just to be able to climb out that hole. You feel right. what I'm saying? But people got to understand that. There's a reason why people trying to be basketball players or rappers or whatever the case may be, because it's looked at as the only shot that people got to be able to get out of they, those communities. But back to this, because we're going to get into something different, because, man, I'm telling y'all right now, we could go on about this all day. And I wouldn't be surprised if next week um, I'm going to let Rich say one more thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if next week um, it's some new developments in this in this war that's going on out here. Um, but go ahead, Rich. I just want to say before we uh, move on, I just want to say to any racist person out there, any evil person out there that's listening to this podcast. I don't know why you like, would be listening if you're racist, but thank no, why? No, no, because well, well, they no, might not. Yeah. They not it's even it, realize it, it that might they, get sent to them. And they, they might get put on by somebody. And they might not realize a lot of people walk that line of racism. Is people think racism is just you walking outside on some hell Hitler? Nah, it be the attitude of like, nah, cops pull me over too. Uh, no, they don't do. You feel what I'm saying? It's that middle ground that's the most dangerous. And at the end of the day, we are praying that that some of these people who have this hatred inside of them or have this evilness, that they can change before we hate you. And that they and can receive this message. Before we hate you and it get all fucked up. But listen, anyway, back to what I was going to say real quick before we move on. People got to, it's only certain things you can do here, right? But after what just happened, the shift in the world with these riots, pandemic, all this shit we dealing with, throw the whole 2020 away. Um... People really, especially the racist shit, the evil shit, people got to pick something, bro, because I feel like it's only certain shit you could do. Either, like Garnett, uh, even going back to what Garnett said, people can speak on something, they can lie, right? You can try to lie. Why lie, though? Why lie? Because your energy can't lie. Your energy is not going to lie. Whenever you're in a, in a room at a restaurant, at a school, anywhere in public with a group of people or a certain nationality that you don't like, that you resent, that you hate, your energy is not going to be able to lie, right? So it's like you got to pick either you want to work it out and fix this shit and be like a worldly person or you want to continue to let this hatred live inside of you. And now you're eventually going to be living in like a bubble. I seen somebody, my cousin, shout out to my cousin. And, you know, because he put up a post about like all this that's going on. And there was a lady speaking about Trump and she was just saying that she felt like Trump was really like the type of person that she felt has been living in his own little bubble all his life. And it's true. Like, he's been rich, wealthy from his people all his life. He's been living in this bubble all his life where he can't even, like, relate to all this shit that's going on in the world. All this other shit. He don't know nothing about poor people. He don't know nothing about poverty, violence, ghetto. So he can't relate to none of that shit. And what I'm telling people now, other people on a small scale that's dealing with that same evil, that same racism. It's like, bro, it's a big-ass world out here that's beautiful out here where we all just really, like, together. Right. We go to and you got certain people that got their areas. We go to Jamaica. You go to here to vacate. But you still get love from these own people in their own areas. Right. So it's like, why would you want to be stuck in a white world or why would I want to be stuck in just a Latin world when it's all this beautiful shit out here, bro? All these beautiful people that we can learn so much about culture and shit, man. Stop that shit, man. Let's make the world a better place, man. Yo, I don't know why Garnett Briscoe is looking over here like that. I don't know what what's going on with you, I, th brother. I think I got ADD or something, yeah, bro. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Man. You got I'll ASS, be over here nigga. Going you got it. fucking ASS, nigga. I can only nigga's be ass he put so the glasses long. on, he take them off. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah. the sun ain't in this bitch. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but um, but nah, but something that we did touch on, man, because we cause we we behind with time right now. And um uh, something that we did touch on, we 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 talked about. The idea that people want to hear these things from from celebrities, and then they get the, the the response, you know, or they get the 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 words from their celebrity, and then they disagree, and it turns into a whole lot of shit, and there's disappointment in hearing from that celebrity. What I wanted to ask y'all was, have y'all ever been in a situation? Because now we switching, we going to something else. Let's get more fun, whatever. I don't know if it's fun, if it's heartbreaking. Have you ever met? A celebrity person that you might have like listened to either fuck with their music or you you looked up to them or whatever the case may be. And what was the result when you met them in real life versus the person, you know, that you thought they were? Um, so I met I met a bunch of famous people just being in the right place at the right time. Um, 
And I've really never had any bad experiences, but I have had encounters with Meek Mills <laughs> like oh, man, three a local, times. A local? Yeah. So I think it's Powerhouse, a show that's in Philly every year. And I was a talent escort. Um, definition is someone, there's usually four at a concert, maybe five, depending on how many artists. They give you the list. They break down, okay, we got 20 artists performing. You, Chelsea, you get five artists. So I had Migos, I had Cardi B, I had Nicki Minaj, I had Lil Wayne, and not Lil Wayne. A listers. Um, right. Me Meek Mills. <laughs> and they gave me Meek. And everyone, I was like, oh, I'm excited. It's Meek. I can see Meek. Like, you don't really get to have conversation with them, but when they get there, you got to talk to their manager, get their number, get their sound check, make sure they're all good, show them where their food is, any question they have. Like, you are their, like, little. Um, like bitch. assistant. Yeah, you're their assistant, bitch, for the, for the day. <laughs> you are because whatever they say they need, you gotta run and do it. You got it. You and then they got these golf carts. You gotta ride them around. So long story short, this is when Meek and Nikki was still together, and it was at where the Sixers play. Um, I love Meek. I still do, but I I just I, this encounter will never leave my head. Um, he had the Sixers locker room because he's the last performer, which I didn't know, and they gave me the last performer knowing that. Meek goes on stage whenever he wants. His sound check could be at five o'clock. He gonna show up at six. He has to go on stage and perform at nine because the concert's gotta be done at midnight. He'll go on at eleven thirty and not give a fuck. Um, so I had to go tell his security that he had to go on stage in twenty minutes. Now I don't know if any of y'all have ever been to a Meek show or know Meek. He brings a thousand niggas backstage <laughs> with him wherever he goes. I never understood why he just didn't buy everybody front row seats. <laughs> Or just tell him, like, yo, I need the whole two rows blocked out, whatever. But he's backstage, and I got to go. My boss tells me I got to go find Meek's assistant and tell him that he has to be on stage in 10 minutes. So Meek has, like, three security guards you got to get through. You got to get through one guy. He got to tell another guy. He got to tell another guy. So I'm sitting. I'm waiting. I said, Meek, I go on stage in 10 minutes. Okay. So Meek is smoking in the back. He finally comes out after, like, 15 minutes. So he's already late for his sound. Um, and I had said to his person that was with him because I didn't want to speak to him directly because he kind of has this like scary like I don't want to fucking talk to him because I don't know if he's going to disrespect me because he seems like a nigga that would do that <laughs> so I said he got to go on stage in 10 minutes he's like yo bro chill we going to be on stage and we, when we get on stage I'm like okay well my boss is texting me telling me y'all got to come to the stage and he just didn't give a fuck so I think he had to wait for Nikki so another 10 minutes goes past people are on stage screaming waiting for me to come out Nikki shows up and before she shows up, there's hallways in the back. Her security guards run down the hallway and start screaming, everybody to the edge of the uh, thing. Nikki's coming. Nikki's coming. Nikki's coming. I'm like, okay, nobody look at Nikki. You can't look at Nikki when she's coming. No, 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 like, you can't look at her. That's you can't look at her. Like You got to get to the side. You got to close your eyes. You got to look down. You can't take no pictures while she walks through the hallways. And I'm like, well, why do you have a hundred fucking people back here? Did they if, have blindfolds? I can understand no. if a person, maybe the person says, all right, we don't want no pictures, but don't look at, like, don't look at me. Yeah, it was pretty much keep your head down. Nikki's coming. Stay to the edge of the wall. Okay. Like, turn around, little boy. Yeah, I just felt like that was terrible. The so that was that? that was one thing with Meek that was really bad. And then probably three months, four months ago, before the quarantine happened, Drake and Meek were in uh, at a Sixers game, I believe it was, or somewhere in Philly. And they had came to Atlantic City. Now, I DJ at Brigada. They closed down the whole... I never told anybody this story because I couldn't tell people that I DJed that... Like, people couldn't know that Meek and Drake were in the casino. So I get done at 2 a.m. They said, Drake and Meek is going to be here at 1 a.m. You got to DJ till 6 a.m. So I had got there at 7 p.m. And had to DJ till freaking 7 a.m. So Meek gets there and they wanted me to DJ. It was just me, Drake, Meek... Um, Drake had a couple boys with him. It was the people who deal the shuffle the cards. It was a cocktail waitress. And they set me up to DJ. And Meek gets there, doesn't say anything, comes right up to me and says, yo, you got an iPod connect? And I was like, um, yeah, but I'm here to DJ. I was like, you want to send me any music? There's no iPod connect at the damn casino in the where I'm set up to DJ. So I said, no, I don't have one. He's like, well, what you mean you don't have one? You don't have an iPod Connect? I got some new shit. Y'all need to hear it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I said, okay, well, you can oh, drop me. Like, big fish. 
He came in there big fishing. <laughs> yeah, he wanted me to play. But he is the big fish now. He graduated. I have no problem with that. But I just feel like you should have a little bit of respect, especially if you're an artist, you come in there, you want to hear your music. You know what? There I was actually, no Nipsey Hustle vibes, huh? No, it was not cool. It was not at all. I just felt like every time I see him, I'm kind of like, I turn into this little fucking person where I'm like, I can't say nothing because then if he disrespect me, then I'm going to get mad. But every interaction I've had with him has been where he's just being kind of hella rude. And I'm just like, that's just how he is. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but every interaction, I think I had three interactions with him. Third one, I don't remember, but the second one at the casino, he third pretty one, much... Third one wasn't that bad. Yeah, it yeah. must have not been that bad. <laughs> must cool. have not been that bad, but he definitely is a, is a rude guy. I'm sure he's not rude to people he loves, but... Millie! <laughs> he was rude. And she's like, you, you don't got to hear my shit? And I said, well, I got all the flamers. He said, well, Drake need to hear the flamers. So... I play every Flamer track. Flamers 1, 2, and 3 all night. you had mad hours. Yeah, yeah. I had hey, mad hours. And hey, Drake, Meek, we need Chelsea Lee. We need you to flood Chelsea Lee with and, all the new shit, man. And she, I asked him. I was like, can you send me. it to me? I was like, I'll play your new shit. Send it to me. And then Drake comes up. And Drake was super nice. He's like soft <laughs> Just, to me. He's a little right. soft. He came up. He's, he's like, a little Nickelodeon -ish. man, you've been DJing all night. You doing good job. I was like, thank you. Can you know I get what? a hundred dollar check? Yo, yo, that nigga. yo, yeah. Shout out to Drizzy, man. That's crazy because that just fit like the 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 molds that people think in their head. No, exactly. Drake was yeah. super cool. Drake was like, yo, you did great. I can't believe you've been playing music all night. And Meek comes up and says, you ain't got my shit. He was probably no, trying yeah. to take you on a he jet. No he, he was going to take different. you on a jet still somewhere. He's a good nigga. He come to Meek was like, Drake different. never heard Flamers. You got to play that Flamers. I was like, all right. <laughs> Cause I got all the flamers. Imagine if you didn't have flamers. <laughs> Boy, well, I've been a Meek fan dark. from the beginning, so I got all the flamers. It got See, dark. and that's why I, I still like you, Meek. <laughs> look, look, absolutely. I think I think that's what it more or less more be about when you really like a fan, mm -hmm. and you kind of like you know you get that first moment or that initial moment where you get to meet somebody who you really like, just a fan. You big on them, you know. You really appreciate their art, and you know it just go a little left, you know, for whatever reason, but. Celebrities, I will give them the benefit of the doubt before I tell my story, because I'm going to tell my little story about, you know, me and a celebrity. But I, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. They go through that shit every day. Mm -hmm. So when you really do the math on it, there's a million people walking on them every day wanting the autograph, wanting the picture, yep. wanting some love. I ain't asked for no and picture. I just feel like people in the industry should treat other people in the industry a little bit better. Right, right, you right. Know, it wasn't like we were in a right. nightclub. It was like... It's just me, you, yeah. Drake, and you're not, you're, it's treat not, the janitor you're, like you treat the CEO. Exactly. exactly. And you're and you're dealing with a person that's it. actually doing work with you. So you're saying, yo, I need you to play my music. Yeah. It it takes just as much energy to come at a person kind of like respectfully. It's the same shit. Yeah, then it'd be like, you, you ain't got my shit. <laughs> oh, you ain't got an iPod connect? I was like, no, I'm a DJ. I don't connect iPods. <laughs> <laughs> he wants you to, he wants you to make that shit happen. <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, so one time, all right, so I'm going to tell my little joint real quick where I got a little disappointed by just a legend that I love. Still love him to this death. It's nothing. It's who who real, was it? Real petty. Fat Joe. Oh, no. Fat, oh, I like Fat no. Joe. No. I love I him no, a bunch no, of times. No, not no, Joey. Listen, I don't believe you now. Listen, I'm going to tell you the story. Oh, I, no. I love Fat Joe. I love Fat Joe the Dawn. The fat, fat Joe is the reason, you know, one of the reasons why I do what I do. Most underrated you know, of all time. And he paved the way for people like me. So regardless of whatever, you know, even if he ever curved me, which he did, he curved me. <laughs> But I wasn't mad because I'm, I'm finding out now that he's curved legends. So I'm fucking nothing. You know what I mean? And I, 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 you know, I got curved. But I actually met Fat Joe back in the day when I was like 18, 17, before I really do dove into hip hop shit through a record store owner, Dad's Records. Rest in peace to Dad's Records on Mount Ephraim yeah. Avenue in Pollock Town, Camden, New Jersey. He knew we did music and the Terror Squad was coming, punning everybody. They had the Terror Squad album out, 98, if I ain't mistaken. And he gave me the heads up, like, yo, Joe coming tomorrow. He was like, I'm going to let you and your brother in the store, like, be here at this time. Joe coming. He's coming here. And he knew we were Spanish. We was rappers. We had been rapping in the neighborhood for whatever. So that experience went amazing. I met Fat Joe. He came in there with the bull match, the whole terror squad. Only person that didn't come in was Fat, uh, Big Pun. They said Big Pun wouldn't get off the tour bus. Like, he was, like, resting. Okay. And it, was, it had to be 99 at least. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. something, something right, like yeah, but that. Ahead. But... We in there, we talking, we rapping, they let us in. I'm we talking about Spanish food. Every I remember Fat Joe told me, you know, I, he told me about like, he told, I remember at that time, because I know he, you know, started his diet and changed his whole lifestyle. But at that time, we was talking about like Spanish rice with the eggs over top because it's really like a Latin food, like, <laughs> a, a, like a Spanish thing when you sit the, uh, I'm the eggs. I'm hungry as shit right yeah, now. when you sit the eggs over top of the Spanish rice. But anyway, 
It was amazing, amazing experience. I met one of the, one of my legends, right? And I met Fat Joe a couple times. I've ran into him a couple times, even after that, prior to getting curved. I seen him down AC too, where I seen him elbow a nigga at the crap table. Mm-hmm. He almost elbowed the nigga to the bathroom. Because, <laughs> because the nigga was doing that same, like, he was supposedly a fan, wanted to let Fat Joe hear raps. Mm-hmm. And Fat Joe was telling him, like, yo, this ain't the time to play some gambling. Whatever. But that happened. Years later, finally... My man booked <laughs> Fat Joe recently. Porter Rich then came about. Porter Rich is sizzling in the city, in my area locally. Got shit going on. My man, my homie, shout out to my homie Taffy. He uh, booked Fat Joe to come down for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. They decided to do an after party for the Camden Puerto Rican Day Parade. They bring Fat Joe down. Okay. They like, know, what po- year was this? This was just recently. This was... Um, oh, so I remember this. Yeah, I was this there. Recent. Oh, this I was there. This had to be... Oh, you I, was, pro- I think you did the flyer. Yeah, I was I was involved. Go ahead. I think you did. <laughs> Go ahead. No, yeah, no, so, I know, I know, I know what it is now. So Fat Joe, come, you know, Fat Joe. I'm I'm enthused. I'm like, yo, I'm opening up for you know the legend, my 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 big bro. You know what I mean, my mentor. And it's you know and it's a it's a kind of like small club type environment, so yeah. everybody got a good seat. Yeah. In the we house. was at we was at uh, Trinity Tr- Trinity Live. Yeah, Let's Trinity go. Trinity Live. Trinity we in there, it's all decked out, curtains, everything. We got lick out the ass in there. It's crazy. Just a, a beautiful night, but. Um, Shout first, out to Danny Garcia and, and his yeah, old squad. Danny Garcia, Knox, and him was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, first and foremost, at the parade, there was a shooting that day, which kind of like messed up the vibe for the night we felt for the after party. So it wasn't like crazy schmack as we was expecting, but it was still cool. And Fat Joe, I performed first, I think. I performed first, had it rocking, you know, because the hood was there. They love me. Mm-hmm. Had it rocking. Fat Joe uh, goes next. I think I was before, right before Fat Joe, I think. I think Fat Joe went last, if I'm not mistaken. Fat Joe come out, he rock shit. Lean back, all mm-hmm. the crazy class. He go crazy. They go crazy. Now, I'm in my section. Mind you, because I've already heard about stories about, like, you know, just celebrities curving, you know, us, right. you know, people who they don't know. Us. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah, us. yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, the people, the fans, the people the haven't reached, people. Yeah, yeah. we haven't reached you our levels no yet. Pop. You know, we haven't reached our <laughs> levels <laughs> yet. Oh, what are you? got an iPod Yeah, the iPod, iPod connect. plug. So look, they calling me from out of my section. My, my homie who bore Fat Joe down is calling me out of me. He's sending people to come get me because he bore Fat Joe down for, you know, to bring him down to perform. You know what I mean? Some business. But he also bore Fat Joe down because, you know, I do music. You know what I mean? Whatever. And he want to help me network and shake hands. Yeah. It's always about that with, you know, when family involved. So I finally like, fuck it. I'm like, let me go back here and go see what they want. They keep calling me. Talking about I got to go take a picture with Fat Joe. whoop de whoop de whoop So I go to the back. When I go to the back, you know me, I'm quiet. I'm always quiet. I've been around Meek Mill, Jadakiss, J Electronica, Jeezy, uh, you name them, I've been around them. And I'm always quiet. I've, I've rarely say more than five words. But this was Fat Joe. This is my guy. I met him before when I was young. And I knew he ain't remember the shit. But anyway, <laughs> I still was like, I was, I was sitting there, right? So I'm sitting there. And my man called me. He like, yo, come on, Rich. You got to take the picture with Joe. You got to get... And I'm like, yo, I'm going to take the picture. I'm going to take the picture. I'm like, I'm here. Just, you know, relax. And then out of nowhere, Fat Joe like, yo, I want to take this picture with my man real quick. Can somebody take this? So me being the person that I am, I'm so quick to show people that I'm regular, that I have no ego, that there's no ego tripping with me. I'll do anything. I'll fucking cut the grass and I could be the CEO of the company. Like, and so I was like, yo, give me the camera. I love taking pictures anyway. I take amazing pictures. I told Deb that I want to do photography. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? For so, different reasons. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but nah, that's on my single tip. Pine, listen, pineapple porn. <laughs> yo, listen. So, look, look, Fat Joe, I get the camera, the phone, whatever it is, is him and his man, Poe, Gary Pose. And as they Gary Pose, here go where I'm Gary slip in what I've always wanted to tell Fat Joe. It's just what I've always wanted to tell him. <laughs> And here I go slipping, trying to slip it in. You know, they posing this shit. I'm looking at Joe with his band. I'm like, yo, I'm like, Joe, I know you ain't going to remember me. I'm like, but I met you back in like 98, 99 at the record store. Like, we actually had a whole conversation. And he just looked. He looked at his man. And he said, he looked at his man and said, damn. He, no, he didn't say damn. He said, yo, ain't that crazy? I was just telling you about all the people that said that they met us and we can't remember some shit. <laughs> Like uh, yeah. some shit like that. Straight and played I, you. Yeah, and I, I ain't gonna hold you. I was a little. I was just a little sting with it. You know what? Did I you think laugh? I, 
No, I think I like I took the picture. I took the picture and I think I mumbled. I I, I think I said some shit like uh like yo, it ain't matter anyway. I knew you were I knew you wouldn't remember that shit. You know what I'm saying? I think I said something like that. Like, yo, it it, yeah, it, it don't really matter to me, Joe. I knew you wouldn't remember that shit anyway. Cause I was a little I was a little bothered. I was a little stung. <laughs> You know, and then when I said that, people felt the people were still there from my hood. They All felt the dudes, they felt me with a little sting. I seen it because that's when how millions shout the millions, millions what up? Shout the millions, millions told Fat <laughs> Joe because he know Fat Joe from their little whatever run-ins mm-hmm. or whatever. And he told Fat Joe, he said, Nah, Joe, pull the rich that nigga out here, pull the rich like working, he's sizzling out here, woo woo woo. So shout the millions for the love and the and the comp. And that's when Joe was like. Nah, 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 I rock with Porter Rock. He didn't call me Porter Rich. <laughs> Porter Rock. He called me Porter Rock. He said, nah, 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 I rock with Porter Rock. And I was like, yo, it's all love. And the reason why I had to bite back down and really like not be upset about this shit is he because- he do meet a million people and forget. They meet a million people a day and they and, really don't remember And that's a funny way not, not to get need. annoyed. That's yeah. a funny way not to get annoyed because I, I, me, I hate hearing the same thing over and over and over. And like, I get pissed off. So like, that's actually a clever way to like trick yourself out of that. Yeah. But, you don't, don't, don't be mad at nah, that. Listen, Joe, I got, nah, listen, I got. That sounds like listen, a good ass experience. Nah, he, honestly, listen, I is, ain't, listen, I still follow Fat Joe. I'm still under his post all the time to Don, salute, because he paved the way for us, man. He was one of the first Latinos to really like get at this shit and get out here. And he, and he came from like a, a environment where I come from. So I really just like super related to him. But yeah, he can listen. Once I found out that he curved Jeezy before, <laughs> once I once that came out and him and his little Jeezy was talking recently on like some shit. I think like his little uh the, the Jopra show that he be doing on his live. They call him Jopra now. Listen, I found that he curved Jeezy. I was happy as shit. I, was like, oh, I, I ain't even bothered no more. I was like, the dog. Oh like, man. Yeah, so shout out to Fat. I love Fat Joe, man. So there wouldn't man. be there wouldn't be no Porter Riches. Without Fat Joe's big puns, um, all you know, uh, Kid Frost, yeah. uh, Beat Nuts, yeah. Cypress Hill. Now, Beat Nuts. What's crazy is I remember back in the day it was either ninety seven or ninety eight. Uh, Beat Nuts came out with a song off the hooks, off the books this year, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um, you know, all of a sudden we heard uh, Cuban Link and um uh, and Big Pun. It was the first time I ever heard Big Pun. This dude just popped up on the screen, and I was like, "What the fuck?" With the way that he rapped, right? It was so like. It was like the first time hearing Eminem or some shit like that, right? So, f- fast forward, now we become a, you know, we start knowing who Pun is, you know what I'm saying? Because the deep cover join came out and everything with him and Fat Joe. We got the Fat Joe album that had all the Terror Squad on there, on one joint on, on it. And graduation night, um, a high school, I didn't go to, I graduated, but I didn't go to graduation. I was actually with Big Pun and the Terror Squad that night. Because we was opening for them at a show at like the Stardust Ballroom or some mm-hmm. shit like that in like Pensalkin. Right. So my experience with that was it, it, it was was super dope. Actually, it wasn't nothing bad about it. The nigga pun was completely like a reg. He almost was more like he, I don't want to glorify that. It was like the na- like a neighborhood drug dealer nigga that was cool with all the kids and was like. Buying people food and shit like that. Like, it was like that. We ended up going to Burger King after the, the concert went bad. The promoter didn't have his money. Shit turned into almost like a riot. Yeah, pun, pun, pun wanted information on the nigga. He's looking at it like, yo, this nigga burnt me, whatever. We like, we got burnt too. So we stepped to the limo. Yo, we got burnt too. He like, yo, ride with us. We jump, we, we we hop in our car, follow them. We end up going to Burger King, kicking it, chilling. That shit turned into a rap hold cypher. On, hold, on, hold on, you ate Burger King with Big Pun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was the first person I, I ever met with like diamond teeth. He took because I remember him. He had like diamond teeth in the front, and he had to take them out or whatever like that. Yeah, grills. But like this is, I was I was eighteen years old, and we was right there in the Burger King, rap ciphering. Uh, Fat Joe was the only person that wasn't there. It was all the other niggas, like Triple C. Your shit shit was like the opposite of mine. I still, I still to this day be like, Rich, why didn't you go outside and walk on the bus? Like (laughs) if they, because they told me they was like, yo, pun resting. But that's why I didn't go. I'm yeah. like, if the nigga rested, I don't want to go back and get nah. slapped. Yeah. He, like, was, <clears throat> he was dope. It was Pun, dope. talk crazy. It was dope as shit. He was paying attention to niggas' bars when nigga, different niggas was rapping. Oh, no, nah, that part right there. You said that, Jody. That shit fine. Like, it was a dope-ass experience where we went home like, damn, 
We met Pun because I think that was the first famous person I ever met in my life. Rest now, in peace to Pun. Now, Pun, now, Pun, you know, before we get out of here, my greatest influence in rap music of all time, and the reason why this studio probably here and everything else is Prodigy and Mob Deep. Mob Deep was my top thing. It made me fuck with rap in the first place in like 1994, 95. So Rest here we go. Prodigy. Yeah, so fast forward, I'm the one of the biggest Prodigy fans on the earth. Yeah, like, it's, it's crazy. They know how many arguments I get into when we're trying to rank Prodigy and all of that. Hey. And we had, um, you know, we had a label called Screwface. Screwface did a lot of things. We was always on the front cover of uh, iTunes and all of that shit when iTunes was popping and people was actually selling music. And there was a BET Music Matters um, in New York. Um, I think it was at, like, Soho House or something like that. It was a BET uh, Music Matters. And my artist, Sneakerbox Chop, was performing there. And turns out, you know, Prodigy's artist. Um, it was the boy that was in the movie Illegal Tender, the uh, Spanish kid with the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, Hernandez. Yeah. Uh, I forget what his name is, but the, think, but he I was performing there. Yeah. So I get there, and you know, my my friends is making fun of me. They calling my dad and shit, like, "Yo, your dad gonna be here? You gonna meet your dad and shit?" They clowning me and shit. We in the green room, and I'm talking to Jack Thriller about some movie shit uh, in Philly. We down there busting it up, and by the time I get upstairs, all my boys is like, "Yo." You missed your pop, yo. He was on stage, right? Now I'm a grown ass man. I'm like 32. Right. I'm sad as hell. Like, where P at? Like, I wanted to meet P. I'm sad as shit, right? They like, he all the way over there. So I look over and I see him dumb far. So can't get over there. Whole uh the, we had a great night. We leave out. I'm still a little down, like, damn, man, I wanted to poly with P. You know what I'm saying? Like, just some bullshit. So we start walking, and it's me and my other boy, Nice Daytona, who's the only other person that's the same level fan of Prodigy as me. So we end up walking the wrong direction, like two or three New York City blocks. You know how long that is, right? Sure. So now we like, fuck, man, we went the wrong way. We got to go back the other way. So we turn around. We walking backwards. We get to, like, a, you know, a little crosswalk. I'm looking down, like, damn, man. Supposed to meet P and shit. And I look over to the left of me and this motherfucking prodigy. And they're like, he's on the corner right next to me. Look at me. So now we crossing the street together. I turn into a straight hoe. <laughs> right, right? So I'm like, fangirl. Yo, yeah, no, I'm like, no. I, I literally, he's, I was talking so fast. I was like, yo, P, yo, my nigga, you the reason why I do all this shit. Da, 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 da. Like, I spit out some wild shit. He looking at me like, Nigga, who the fuck is you? <laughs> right? right? He looking at me like, who the fuck is you? So then he say, he, we like walking off different directions. Like we walking away from each other. He says, he looking at me like, you fucking weirdo. But just to be nice, he like, where you from, my nigga? I said, Camden, New Jersey. His face completely changed. Oh, yeah, shit, real over there, son. Da -da 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 -da. Like, like his eyes lit up. Like, he was just happy as hell about that shit. Like, oh, word. Yeah, Camden, New Jersey. That shit go hard. Da -da -da. <laughs> so I'm like, yo. So now it's me. White Mike's there with us, too. White Mike is completely unenthusiastic about this because he don't give a fuck about Mob Deep. <laughs> there you go. Me and Daytona, happy as shit. We jump in the car. Mop deep the whole ride. Blasting. Blasting, right? It never White listen, Mike mad as hell. Yeah, yeah. Like White Mike going to hell. sleep in the back of the car, right? So the, so the, the, the lyrics never felt so crispy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they never felt. I'm like, y'all got these freshly uh, shaked, prodigy shaked hands and shit, right? We like little kids, man, because me and this man used to literally sit Indian style around radios, listening to music in the 90s and shit like that. When we was 14, 15, that's what we did. Like, we was watching movies. So I DM prodigy. When I'm when I'm riding home, it's like three in the morning. I'm like, yo, I'm the nut ass nigga that met you on the street <laughs> that was talking crazy. Uh, what I meant was this. And I told him that I was at BET Music Matters. That was my label. So then he goes on my page. Now he can see, oh shit. We Look was actually the two people on the same. It was me, it was us and him. Mm -hmm. That was it. So I wake up, he following me. I see he go like a bunch of pictures and he liked the picture from what that I, something I drew of him when I was like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. he, a portrait of him? Yeah, but it was something I drew when I was 19. It was Not a different the one. last one. Not the did. last one. Right. So I see following me and all that. I hit him. I said, listen, if you fuck with that, wait till you see what I'm about to do. I drew the new one, the one that's infamous that people know of now. Mm -hmm. I drew that shit. He hit me like, yo, I need you to contact me directly. Bro, I want you to do the new Mob Deep album cover. You know what I'm saying? That's so good. now, you know, I'm talking to him and I'm just like, Damn, this is dope as hell because I've always been able to do this in mm -hmm. life where I can meet whoever and and right once place, again right time. and once again I talked about this earlier. Freakishly talented. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't freakishly talented, that wouldn't happen. You feel me? But he sees something undeniable. No, I need this, my nigga. Call me. So 
this is where this shit gets gets fucked up. So Thanks in the midst going. of all of this, every day we on we on a gram cracking back and forth, whatever. He be cracking because at the time the chick that I was dealing with, I would put up her pictures for like Women Crush Wednesday shit like that. And he would be on there clowning and shit like, damn, son, you want some love shit with the, yo, da, 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 clowning me and whatnot. And I'm just like happy as hell, whatever. So one day I put up a slideshow of her. So the nigga goes on my page and he's like, damn, done like you motherfucking in love with this bitch. You got this bitch up in slideshows now. You, you got pictures of the bitch. You writing poems of the bitch. Like he clowning and shit. The chick was a bougie woman. Uh you know, with a real good job, real respectable position, a lot of money, and was very offended by being called bitch. So she goes to his page. Oh, no. You told her that? She said, she, she oh. saw, this, this, this is the chick I'm fucking with. She saw the, the message. Yeah, she see it. It's right there. You know what I'm saying? So she goes on his page and goes in. Disrespectful. Who the fuck you calling a bitch? I'm a this, 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 this. You a washed up rapper from the mm, night, like uh, violated, uh, violated, uh, violated, <laughs> violated, violated. You was like, uh, I'm like, no, nah, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you Don't disrespect my dad. Yo, yo, so, my dad. so call yeah, him. Yo, so, so look, so he, <laughs> so he to the point where now the fans in his on his page is attacking her. Now he to the point where he got to defend himself. So he like, yo. Uh, first off, you know what I'm saying? You all in my page talking crazy, talking about you used to be a mob deep fan and you would have known that we we say niggas and bitches. Mm -hmm. It ain't no disrespect, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then your man, at the end of the day, he was a fan. I ain't have to reach out and da 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 Like oh, it just turned into some gosh. shit like that. And whoop, I got I got X'd. No longer doing the cover, unfollow, we not it's a riz app, right? See, that's why you can't be putting all your business on Instagram. <laughs> look, 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 look. Your relationship. Listen, so look, so the whole shit was crazy as hell, cause then uh I'm trying to say all this real quick. Me and the shorty, we go to we go to dinner. Damn, damn, Chelsea in here breaking microphones I'm sorry. and shit. You know what I'm saying? But we we go to dinner that night. I'm kind of quiet because I'm like, damn, I'm thinking about damn, I wanted to do this cover. I used to look at these covers. Thinking about Read these oh, covers. Oh, so Listen, cool. I used to read these covers. I had these covers on the wall. Now I'm grown and I've realized that you're about to design one. I'm about to be the person that did the album cover. But not cover. no more, right? Yeah, that shit was a wrap. So, so Shorty's like, um, you know, you still upset about that? I'm like, hey, it's cool. You know what I mean? Now nah, I feel like you still upset about that or whatever. We get into an argument. Done. Right? Like a crazy argument. Done. 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 Oh, done all right? that for done, nothing. Done. Done. All that for nothing, right? So, some time passes and we I'm on a I'm on a different podcast and they ask how you got introduced to hip hop and I bring up Mob Deep and that that you know the story of just yo we used to listen to Mob Deep and that's how that happened and the homie that was on there with me was like yo I'm doing a panel with Prodigy um I'm doing a panel with Prodigy up, actually like tomorrow <laughs> if you want to roll I'm like uh, nah you know what I'm saying because of what it was he like well if you reconsider let me know because I told him what it was he said man he probably ain't even tripping about that shit come through <laughs> the next day. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I go down there and I bring the portrait that I drew. Right. So he there, he doing a book signing and shit like that. We uh we we get in a little line joint. I walk up, I got the joint, he see it, you know what I mean? He end up just getting up, shaking the nigga hand, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? He like, man, this shit cool, like whatever. And we ended up having a good at like a good ass day, everything back. And this is mad time later. Let me remind y'all. From when this you is, was trying to do the album cover. That was this is a mad time later. And everything in life happened for a reason because that happened and we was down in like uh Maryland. We was in Baltimore. The next day, after that, I'm back in Jersey. Somebody call me. Yo, Dev, we need somebody to produce this interview. We got Prodigy and Mob Deep coming up, and we, you know what I mean? Somebody gave us your number. We need you to come over here and Record this joint, do whatever for this interview in Philly. I'm like, bet. So the next morning, now he see me again. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, now you where, where I'm from, you know, niggas call me out here. You know what I'm saying? So we now we end, I ended up producing that joint, right? And it was a good thing because I knew where everything stood at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because we fast forward some months. And I'm out eating with my son at... Uh, I think it was Joe's Crab Shack and my phone start ringing crazy. Like everybody's texting me and I get a call from the homie that own who mag. Um, yo, did you hear what's going on, bro? They saying prodigy died. 
And I'm like, oh, and everybody calling me my sister. Every because people know as a kid how much you know I looked up to this it's person, influence. and then get to get to the point where you know this person. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was surreal. I remember sitting there trying to eat with my kid and think regular, but I'm really thinking about like how wild that scenario is, and then everybody's contacting me. I'm getting hit on on Instagram and all that. And and, <clears throat> and fast forward, you know, it was a sad ending. But an amazing thing to see that man's funeral and see that drawing that I did of him sitting right in front oh. of the entire thing. Word up. That was dope. I seen that. And it was like, that shit I for me that. was like super powerful. That just punched you, me in the stomach. Yeah, like that shit was like super powerful. You got, that, a, you got a picture hanging in 50 office too, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You all over the place, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. So you for ain't got me, got nothing hanging in my crib, bro. <laughs> Let me get that up off. Listen, man. But now nah, that nah, was we gotta wait till we pop yeah, off. Yeah, right. We, we gotta, gotta wait till we you pop. You just to regular. Get, nah, we gotta crazy, wait till we man. pop to get born. Yeah, but um, but 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 I just want to say this, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Everybody that um that listens every week that fuck with the sound only Saturdays. Tell a friend, man. Tell a friend about what we talking about here because we bring you know the serious issues, but we also bring the the, the goofy shit. Um. Shout out to all the celebrities, whether you curved us or didn't curve us. <laughs> and shout out for real, for real, and rest in peace to Prodigy Mob Deep. Because one of the one things, if you was a Prodigy fan, all these, the, them, them, them street raps been done. They all, all homies, too. All, Prodigy, yeah, pun. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah all, like, all homies. It was all, all like homies, good. All homies. Prodigy constantly rapped about the shit that's going on right now. Don't fall for the tricks, y'all, too. I know they leaving piles of bricks. They doing all. He rapped about all of this shit with the martial law and the things that they was going to be trying to implement the government and all of that. He was the conspiracy theory rapper at this point. But please pay attention. Everybody be out there. Be be safe. We will be back. You already know it's Tuesdays. Our visual podcast drops every Tuesday. And on Saturday is always sound only Saturdays, man. So for myself, for Chelsea Lee. I love y'all. For Porter Rich. Peace, 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 And for Garnett Briscoe. (laughs) uh, And my homie Leonardo Vega, who's in here just, uh, he's crunching numbers and pressing buttons and everything like that. Um, (laughs) You know, doing his thing. Man, we love y'all. From the Devin Wade Show, we out, man. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. These my type of numbers right here. That's right. DJ Caesar Porter Rich, drop a bomb on him. It's like it ain't no escaping it, they kill us and taping it Baptisms turn to drowners, gotta be a bathing ape in it A cold world, so I stay close to the heater Gotta look at how they treat us, crooks and poses leaders Cops lock and kill us, doctors they won't heal us So I just fear law and I stick to the five pillars I try to give them gems every time I let a verse go Pray for the best, but be prepared for the worst though Dudes talk like bitches and they move like delicious All my dogs vicious and they move like malicious Drums in them long clips this the shit we arm with Blade on the chopper back Sit under my armpit Real Vietnam shit And no I don't glorify Trouble come knocking door flying Shit is horrifying Feel like we drown us Getting deeper and deeper So I sleep with the sweeper in Case I meet with the reaper So trust ain't even optional Ops and cops watching you Vaccines seem like They just wanna put some shots in you But like a bartender I'ma send them shots too We can send them back and forth Till they send the cops through